All right, welcome back. So in this video, I wanted to do another example of computing a Galois group. And in this one, we're gonna do the Galois group of x to the fourth minus four x plus two over q. So this is gonna be a little bit more challenging, but it's gonna show some of the techniques that you can use to find the Galois group if you start with a general cubic or quartic polynomial. So to get started, we first want to find how many real roots this polynomial has. So find number of real roots. Okay, and the reason that we want to do this is because um, the Galois group of a polynomial often includes the permutation that is complex conjugation. Right, so if a polynomial has um, a pair of complex roots, then one of the um, possible Galois automorphisms is going to be um, complex conjugation that sends every complex number to its complex conjugate. Okay, so for this polynomial, you can take the derivative. So the derivative here is going to be 4x to the third minus 4. And so it's easy to check that the only critical point that this polynomial has is x equals 1. So this is the only point where the polynomial is um, going to change from increasing to decreasing. Um, and so based on that, if you uh, plug in 1 into this polynomial um, and you play around with the derivative a little bit, it's easy to see that it has this kind of shape like that, and so it has two real roots. So because there are two real roots, there are also two complex roots. So that means that the uh, Galois group, well, I guess I can write, um, I guess if k is the splitting field, right? So the Galois group contains conjugation. Okay, so why is this helpful? Um, because we can also see that this polynomial is irreducible by Eisenstein's criterion. Okay, so this is irreducible by Eisenstein's criterion with p is equal to 2. And so we know also that the Galois group is transitive. Okay, so it contains a permutation of the roots of this polynomial that is basically a four cycle. So, so far we know that this is transitive and it contains conjugation. Um, so conjugation, thinking about that in terms of a cycle, just kind of looks like that, for example. Um, and so therefore the Galois group is a subgroup of S4 because there are four roots. Um, and it is also transitive and it also contains a basic transposition. And so therefore the two possibilities for what it could be are S4 and D4, the dihedral group. So if this seems a little bit confusing, um, this is kind of a well-known result that there are basically five transitive subgroups of S4. Um, and they are S4, the cyclic group with four elements, D4, the Klein-4 group, and one that I'm missing, um, let me see. Uh, oh yes, yeah, the alternating group. Okay, so these are the four, the five uh, transitive subgroups of um, S4. The only ones that contain a basic transposition that just switches two elements is uh, S4 and D4. Okay, those are those are the only ones. 
Uh, so then the question is, which of those two groups is it? Is it S4 or is it D4? And to figure that out, we're going to have to um, introduce some additional tools, which I'll do on the next page. Okay, so on this page, I kind of wrote two of the more important tools that you need to uh, find Galois groups for polynomials like this. Uh, the first one is called the cubic resolvent, and this is uh, assuming that you start with a quartic polynomial. So if you have a quartic x to the fourth plus ax plus b, so if it's in this specific form, uh, then the cubic resolvent is uh, defined to be r3 of x, and it's equal to this polynomial. Okay, so in our case, the polynomial that uh, we started with was x to the fourth minus uh, 4x plus 2. And so that means that the cubic resolvent is x to the fourth minus 8x minus 16. Okay, and this is a specific uh, instance of the, what the cubi uh, cubic resolvent is. Um, you could actually start with any quartic that you want, and there's a general formula, but this is the one that we need in, in basically in this case. Uh, so then the discriminant of a polynomial, assuming you have a polynomial that factors completely into linear factors in a splitting field like this, is uh, defined to be uh, this value. So it's just the product taken over all of the roots, and you just take the, the difference of the roots and uh, square it and multiply it all together. Um, so again, in this case, with the f of x that we started with, um, it's uh, a little bit uh, difficult to know what the discriminant of this is just uh, from knowing um, fr from this formula because we don't know exactly what the roots are. Okay, but again, it turns out that there's a convenient formula uh, if you specifically have a quartic polynomial like this. Uh, so in this case, the discriminant is the following. So it's going to be negative 27 and then um, multiply by this coefficient to the fourth power, and then plus 256 and then times this other coefficient to the third power. Okay, so if you do that, you'll find that this is equal to negative 4864. Um, okay, and this uh, matters because uh, knowing what these two things are tells us actually what the Galois group could possibly be, uh, if it's specifically a cubic or a quartic polynomial. Okay, so it turns out that uh, what is actually uh, in general true is the following. So if the uh, discriminant, or I guess we can write it as delta, um, so if the discriminant of your polynomial happens to be not a perfect square, uh, so we can just write not equal to square, um, then there's uh, basically two possibilities for the uh, cubic resolvent. So the cubic resolvent, um, if this turns out to be irreducible over your starting field, which in this case was Q, um, then that means that the Galois group, so I'll just write G, uh, that this is equal to S4, um, which you might remember is one of the ones that we thought it might be. Um, and then if this is reducible, Again, if the discriminant isn't a perfect square, the uh, Galois group ends up being either D4 or C4. So, um, you know, in this case, we um, basically just need to figure out whether this is uh, irreducible or reducible. And uh, if it's irreducible, we automatically know that the, the Galois group is, is S4. Um, again, using the fact that this number is not a perfect square because it is less than zero. Okay, so is the uh, cubic resolvent a reducible polynomial? 
sorry, uh, this, this should be x to the third. So is this a reducible polynomial? Well, you can use, um, for example, reduction modulo z to uh, see if this is reducible. Uh, so I'll start a new page to do that. So we wanted to know if this polynomial is uh, reducible. One of the ways to do that is uh, using reduction mod z, or uh, reduction mod p, rather. Uh, so if this were a reducible polynomial over q, it would also be reducible over uh, the integers modulo p, let's say. Um, so in this case, it's convenient to use z mod 5z. So if I reduce this polynomial, I get x to the third plus 2x plus 4. And I can check directly that no element of z mod 5z is a root of this polynomial, right? Because, for example, if I plug in 0, I get 4. Uh, if I plug in 1, I'm going to get uh, 7, which um, is 2 mod 5, you know, and so on. And so because this has no uh, roots, it's irreducible over z mod 5z. And so, you know, therefore we can conclude that the original polynomial is, uh, is irreducible over Q as well. Um, okay, so what we know is that the cubic resolvent is irreducible. And we know that the discriminant is not equal to a square. And so what that tells us is that the... Galois group. Originally, we thought that this was either going to be S4 or D4, uh, but we now know from these two facts that it's equal to S4. Uh, and that's basically it. So what's cool about this problem is that you don't even really need to think about what the roots of the polynomial are um, or do anything with the polynomial directly. You can just figure out what the Galois group is using these other facts. And um, I will link in the description um, a little bit more uh, information. There's actually an article that kind of talks about uh, finding Galois groups and uh, why this works. Um, so yeah, I will link that in the description if you're curious. Um, but that is uh, pretty much it. So thank you very much for watching.